Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, not bad. So, pretty strong incentive to go black for the Strider, Atris, and Temples. Nice fixing, too. So, let's uh, go color by color, I guess. So, in white, what are the standout cards? We've got Double Blessing, so if we can maybe have a nice aggressive enchantment-based deck, that could be quite strong. We've got a Dreadful Apathy as a nice removal spell. Helios Pilgrim is usually pretty good if you've got a nice aura to f search up with it. We've got a bunch of flying creatures with a hero, Pegasus, Chimera. And Archon of Falling Stars is an excellent card as well. And then of course we've got Shatter the Sky, which can also catch the opponent off guard and potentially be pretty good. So white seems okay, not super deep, not too much removal, but could be a good support color to a deeper first color. Then taking a look at blue, we've got a few okay cards, but it's not super deep. We've got a nice trick with Chain to Memory, we've got a Bound Spell, some card draw with Omen of the Sea, a couple turtles if we want to play defense, a bit of removal with a Turn to Fish, and then a good flyer with Witness. And then of course in black we have Atris as well. So if black is deep enough, then blue-black could work out. But by itself, blue is not super deep. Let's take a look at black. Well, black looks uh, pretty deep. Lots of cards and also a lot of playable cards. We've got a favor, which is quite good if we can fill the graveyard. Double omen to get creatures back. Piper, maybe a nice sacrifice enabler. Feel alright to draw some cards and fill the graveyard. Uh, I've got a couple harpies, which aren't amazing, but usually serviceable. Soul Reaper is also usually pretty good. Got a Strider, of course, one of our better cards. And a nice removal spell and drag. As well as the Hierophant, which also helps us fill the graveyard. And then, of course, Atris as a nice incentive to go blue-black. And a Rise to Glory, maybe we can splash white as well. So black looks quite good. Taking a look at red. So yeah, red doesn't offer all that much. We've got a couple decent two drops, the Celebrant and the Oracle I'm a fan of. But uh, that's pretty much it. We've got a Final Flare as removal. And then a few aggressive cards like the Cyclops. But um, yeah, I'm not super interested in red. Does green offer anything? A um, couple good cards. Carry at it, so we've got a Brawler, and then the Boar and a Mystic Repeal are pretty decent. And then a Chimera and a Rachner. So green could be a support color, but it's not deep enough to necessarily carry the entire deck. A couple Tower Scouts, filler cards as well. Tower Scout is one of those cards that seems better than it, I think, plays out, just because it matches up poorly against a lot of the escape cards. Like, if you play this and the opponent has a Rage Hound, it's just gonna trade, unless you're the aggressor. And then eventually the opponent gets their Rage Hound back and you're kind of down on cards. Whereas in a normal set, a 3-mana three 3-3 three three with slight upside would be pretty decent. And then, I guess there's a Multicolor cards, not too many of them. Any good artifacts? Lyre and the Wings, maybe? So... With this pool, I would probably start out laying out blue-black and see how that looks. Maybe see if we need to splash a Rise to Glory, but we don't have any fixing, no amulets, and we're not playing green as our primary in that case. So straight blue-black might just be the best place to start. So we'll uh, lay out the deck, see if we're happy with the curve or if there are some issues that we need to work out. So first put all the cards we're more interested in, in a pile, and then we can maybe make some adjustments. Might play Libation, 
Probably not gonna play too many harpies, but one might be okay. And then, uh, got a nice temple, the lyre. So how many cards is this? 39, so we basically already have a deck here, but let's see how it uh, looks like. So not many two drops, although sealed is usually slower than draft, so it's not like we necessarily need all that many cheap plays, but not having any. Besides Piper could be an issue. Of course, we could always play Turtles if we need some extra early blockers. Decent chunk of interaction. So if we added a Turtle, this would kind of be our deck. How does this deck play out? What's our game plan? We've got some reasonable blockers with cards like Turtle. Bunch of three toughness creatures, Seaguard. So we can kind of hold the grounds and then try and win with flyers. Although we don't have that many. We've got a witness. And is that it? Harpy. So the plan of winning with flyers, not necessarily amazing. Maybe our plan is to just kind of outvalue the opponents with Atris and getting back Atris with Omen of the Dead and try and win that way. Do have instructors to help us fill the graveyard for escape as well. Although, how many escape cards do we actually have? Just a Strider. So we're a bit light on escape. I guess we also have the Mogus' favor. So yeah, don't have that much escape, sadly. Otherwise, we could take um, more advantage of our graveyard. So blue-black could potentially be playable, but it's not super exciting. What we could definitely do is splash Atris. So let's say we're black-white, we could splash blue for just Atris, thanks to the temple in part. And maybe that looks slightly better. So let's have a look at that configuration. There could be other blue cards worth splashing, but for now I'll just uh, go with just uh, Atris. So the Blessings might be playable. Apathy, Pilgrim, if we've got something to search up, I'll have to double check. Shatter, of course, could be quite strong. Pegasus. Maybe the Chimera, probably the Archon, and then we had that gold card as well. Rise to Glory. So do we actually have any Auras? Mogus' favors an Aura. Is that it? I guess uh, Apathy as well. All right, so the Pilgrim looks good with two targets, and they're kind of different, so we might search those up in different situations. And if it's late in the game, hopefully there's still one in the deck. So the Pilgrim looks good which means Rise of Glory also looks decent, since we can potentially sacrifice Apathy and get it back. So yeah, Black-White seems a bit more exciting so far. Uh, I might have to play this random 2-drop to fill out the curve. Uh, I might need the Hero of the Winds, although maybe not. I uh, don't think we need Idyllic Tutor. So this is 40 cards, so let's see. How does the curve look like? Not that many twos. Decent chunk of threes. At four. We've got some uh, decent cards as well. And this deck has more flying creatures than the blue black deck had. We've got Archon, we've got Chimera, Pegasus, as well as Harpy. So the plan of winning with flying creatures looks a lot more realistic here. We're a bit creature light, which also means that uh, Omen and the Blessings aren't at their best if we're not going to have many creatures to target in the first place. So I might need to play like an extra Harpy or play this Hero of the Winds, which I guess plays well with the Blessing as well. So we might have to make some small adjustments there. But uh, we can figure those out in just a second. But uh, yeah, on paper... I think I like black, white, splash, blue a bit more than just blue, black. Yeah, I think Atris is worth splashing for, especially when we have Temple. If we didn't have Temple, it would be a closer decision. But uh, this is just kind of a built-in two-for-one. Sealed is all about getting as much value as possible. Games are usually a bit slower. So I think it's worth it. Anything else worth splashing for? I could 
potentially considered a familiar over Harpy. Scry 1 can maybe help us find our missing color, and maybe we're more interested in a 1-3 than a 2-1. 2-1s can be soft to opposing Mogus' favors. So that's potentially a, a change we can make as well. Uh, Corsair could be okay with Chimera, but we're also playing three colors, so I don't want to play too many double white cards. And then of course we also have Shatter the Sky, which could catch the opponent uh, off guard. And especially in Best of One Sealed, where they don't get to sideboards, this is gonna be even better. So, this is 42. Um, do we want to play 18 lands? I don't think we do. Although the mana base is going to be a little bit rough with only 17. But we don't have that many mana sinks as issue. If we had more escape, we could maybe get away with more lands. Could also consider splashing the Witness of Tomorrows if we want to extend our splash. But I would prefer to limit the splash to as uh, few cards as possible. So let's double check our sealed pool here to see if we left out any powerful cards. So Pious Wayfarer doesn't seem great, don't have that many enchantments. Tutor. There's no one enchantment that necessarily wins us the game, so I don't think it's very good. Quartzer Double White is a bit rough if we want to splash blue as well. And then Unicorn also doesn't seem great here. But I might need like one extra chunky creature at 5. Although the sentry might be better for that role, just to hold the ground, although it is double white, so it might be a bit more difficult to cast. But I could see the sentry being playable here. Then blue, the only other blue cards I could consider splashing are the removal spell and the flyer. So those are maybes. And then in black, don't need more harpies, don't think I want to return. And marauder seems unnecessary. I, c I guess I could play one over like a Hero of the Winds, although this does have a bit of synergy with a Blessing, so that's also like a maybe. So reds we've discussed. I think we can dismiss that. The green had a few playable cards, but I think uh, I'm happier with this black-white splash-blue configuration, although I could take a look at black-green splash-blue just to be thorough here. So how would that look like? Get an extra cheap creature, which I don't mind. Repeal's good. Carry out it is nice. Return we can definitely main deck. Probably don't want Skirmisher. Got a couple scouts at three. Might be better than Harpy. So this could be a replacement and then I'm pretty happy with the Chimera. Omen could also make it easier to splash Atris, so... Might play that one as well. We've got the Boar at five. And then the Brawler at 6. So this would kind of be our deck. The Wings, definitely also consideration in green, making our giant creatures half flying. So black, green, splash, blue honestly also looks pretty appealing. So it's actually kind of close. The upside of green is that we get better fixing for the blue splash, so it's definitely a lot more reasonable to add Atris since we get carry added for blue, we could play Omen, which can find an island. And uh, we already have a temple that we're pretty happy to play regardless. Like, the parts I don't like about white is that we need to play some weaker, cheap creatures, like the Leonin. The Blessing is a little bit out of place. And some of these flying creatures, like the Hero, are not super exciting. The upside of white is... We get a nice 2 for 1 with Rise to Glory, potentially, although we're a bit light on Auras. Arkan, I guess, has kind of the same problem since we don't have that many enchantments. We don't have many enchantment creatures to get back. I guess we do have a few, but not as many as I would like. So these cards are potentially 2 for 1s, but they're a bit conditional. And then, of course, we get the Sweeper, which, uh, of course, is quite good in, in uh, Limited as well. So yeah, white does offer some good cards. I think the, the power level in green is a bit flatter. So we don't have the high highs of white, but we also don't have the low lows that we have in white. If we go black green, we could also potentially splash a second blue card, so that makes splashing the 
removal spell or the flyer also a lot more reasonable. So we could also factor that in. The black green deck could have a harder time closing out the game since we don't have as many evasive creatures. But uh, I guess playing the wings helps out with that a little bit. We probably don't have to play both Mystic Repeal and Return to Nature, so I'm probably leaning Repeal. And then this is kind of our interaction. So let's say we just played a Repeal in the main deck. Could easily cut the Marauder. Could always play Harpy, but I think I prefer the Scouts. Uh, I guess it's close. I could go two Scout, one Harpy. And then we've got the Arachnir, the Chimera, and the Strider as nice escape cards, so that makes the Hierophant and the Funeral Rites a lot more interesting too. Uh, what are the weaker cards here? Libation. I guess Mogus' favor is another escape card too, so pretty happy with that. Might not want to splash this. Omen's probably worth it, especially if we play two blue cards, so I think that's okay. Piper's not amazing, but it does give us something cheap. And we can sacrifice it to the Soul Reaper or the Strider for some value too. And then the Marauder is also one of our weaker cards, although we do have a bit of a gap at four. So, if we cut these three cards, this would kind of be our deck. 70 lands with Omen and Karyatid, so plenty of mana. We've got the, the Black Omen to get back some of our key creatures, like the Brawler, the Boar, Atris. And we've got a few ways to fill the graveyard between the Hierophant and the Funeral Rites as well. And then a removal. Favor can take out small things from the opponent. We've got a repeal for big enchantment creatures or enchantments. We've got a drag to the underworlds. A liar can tap stuff down. And the arachner can also potentially take out flying creatures. So don't have a ton of removal, but the card quality overall is pretty high. And then the uh, wings of hubris. Also seems decent, giving our scouts flying, giving our pig flying, especially, is uh, pretty enticing. And then also the boar, if it just trades off for a bunch of the opponent's creatures, we can easily get it back with the omen, so that's also pretty nice. Yeah, I think black, green, splash, blue looks good. And then I only need a single island, since we can search it up with omen. We have carry added for fixing, and we have a temple, so we have plenty of blue for just uh, two blue cards. I probably want nine forests. And then we have seven black sources plus carry added plus omen. So that should be enough. We don't have any double black cards outside of drag, which is not a card we need to play on turn four. Yeah, this looks good. How many creatures total? 14. That's about where we want to be. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, the green trick could be serviceable. The Gift of Strength. The Reach part doesn't seem super necessary since we have uh, Witness, we've got Arachnir with Reach, and we've got the Wings. So we probably have enough flying interaction that uh, the Reach is not super necessary. And a combo Trick, while okay, it's never going to be a completely terrible card. I think our deck is more about kind of grinding card advantage, using Omen of the Dead to our advantage. So we're a lot less interested in uh, kind of being the beatdown and backing up our creatures with pump spells. If we're the, kind of the defensive deck, then Gift of Strength loses a lot of value. Alright, this hand's not great. Got an Arachnir I can play early, as well as a Mogus's favor. But uh, Omen doesn't do much, we're missing blue. I think this is a mulligan. This is better.
they're keeping up a counter spell, I could play Omen at instant speed, getting my blue mana for Atris. Or I can just play Tower Scout, which is a good blocker here. And if it gets countered, it's not too bad. Ah, they got their own Omen. Ooh, Giants. 5-6, pretty big. Also, we do have a Death Toucher here. Strider in the graveyards. So this can find creatures or lands, so it's only going to find the lands. Tempted to play Atris, hoping it doesn't get countered. Alternatively, I can go Piper plus Omen and then next turn play Atris. Maybe that's uh, slightly better. And then what does Omen get? Probably doesn't matter too much. I guess another Swamp is fine. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to exile the boar, since we can maybe get it back with our two copies of the Black Omen. Don't think I wanna chump quite yet. Take five. And now we can play Atris. I mean Brawler's pretty good here. Probably just take it. And yeah, two lands, so I guess it worked out. And then we can escape Strider next turn, potentially. No attacks. Since I want to double block the Giants. And we can sack the Omen to scry to end of turn as well. Yeah, that seems uh, like a reasonable draw, although the graveyard will be taxed by the Strider already. But I guess we'll still have enough room for the Arachnir here. So sure. Tempted to just play the Brawler for now, killing the Spinner. Could also Mogus' favor, and if they block my Piper I can finish off the Huntmaster after the fights. Probably unnecessary. Uh, they did sadly have Counterspell available, but now we can double block the Huntmaster, which works out. Sadly, the Brawler got exiled, so we can't get it back with Omen, but we still have the Boar in the graveyard, which is a good target for it as well. I mean, just getting back Strider seems okay here. Can chum block and scry. And then maybe next turn play Liar. Can get back artifacts. Enchantments don't think those matter.
Yeah, that seems pretty good. One mana, get rid of your Colossus. That's kind of the problem with these expensive enchantment creatures against uh, naturalized effects. Alright, so... I guess I'll play this now. And then play Lyre. Yeah, I could Mogus' favor my Strider, but... I think I would rather keep it as a way to maybe kill one toughness creatures from the opponent. For now, chomping and scrying is totally fine. So I guess I could tap down the spinner now. For what it's worth. But I'm probably just gonna untap Lyre to tap down Colossus next turn. That's uh, definitely a problem. Since keeping the Colossus tapped down will not deal with the uh, Horn Beetle. Uh, Chimeras, okay. But also not amazing. I think I'd rather look for removal. Drag to the Underworld would be quite good here on the Colossus. Strider could block a potential spinner activation. So that's why I uh, kept it back. Untap, I think we do. The problem with playing Mogus' favor on Strider is that my opponent's not forced to attack into it. They're just happy growing the beetle. So putting favor on Strider doesn't seem like uh, the play. But uh, yeah, Horn Beetle, definitely gonna be an issue. So just gonna Lyre the Colossus, I think. And then I guess I would be okay trading Beetle for Strider. I guess I wanna probably tap it down while they're tapped out before they can maybe draw into a pump spell. Pretty happy with that trade. Possible that they picked up uh, some trick. But I uh, think I gotta go for it. They reconsidered. So we'll decline. Alright, we need some help. I guess that helps. And we can get this back. They might have been sandbagging a flyer, but now the question is, do we keep boar in the graveyard or are Atris probably the boar? Can take out carry edit with a favor pretty easily. Right, Omen can get back boar. And I could play the boar. And I can favor the carry added as well.
Ukraine could decide to Mogus' favor the boar. That way it threatens to kill three creatures here. Or I could now untap Lyre and tap down the Horn Beetle, that way they don't kill the boar. Of course they can activate Destiny Spinner's ability. So how many creatures do I attack with? Could send both of these. Maybe it leaves me vulnerable on the way back. I'll only have Karyatid to jump with. So what's the opponent's play? They can make a 3-3 land with a spinner to trade off. But they are taking 9 here. I think this is okay. They're also slowly running out of cards. Yeah, the boar's kind of a double-edged sword. Opponents did, of course, get to draw a bunch of cards. But we did set them back on boar presence. Yeah, boar would have been better if they weren't able to trade off and it just kind of kills two creatures on the spot. Or if we have a way to give it flying, it's pretty strong too. Alright, it's a pretty good card. Although they did just escape, so they might not have a way to get it back right away. If they do attack, I'm probably chomping, and then the question is scry one first or scry two first? Probably scry one first. Tower Scout's pretty mediocre here, but getting to untap a creature is not bad. Second so attack for 9. Play it, untap Strider. And I could also play the Favor somewhere. If I favor the Arachnir, then it still doesn't die. So actually, Scout seems fine. Can probably have better draws, but... Also have to remember that we can untap Lyre to tap down an extra creature to get in a lethal attack. But we were a bit short here. So yes, let's favor. I mean, I could also favor the Strider. It's just that if they do decide to chum block, we get in a little bit more damage by favoring the Arachnir. Of course, untapping Arachnir lets me block the Flyer as well, but... I might be okay trading for their Colossus. Because we can probably get Strider back from the Graveyard once again. So, close game. They need 
5 cards in Graveyard to escape Uro, so that's not happening anytime soon. That's ah, pretty decent. So interesting decision now with a liar. Opponent has two blockers. So if I decide to untap liar, I could tap down one additional creature here. I also have this Mogus' favor, which could kill the Viper, but then of course I would need to kill my Strider, which I can't since I can't sack it to itself. If I had put the favor on the Arachnir, I could have had lethal potentially by sacking Arachnir, getting back favor on Viper, and tapping down Colossus. So all that being said, do I tap down Colossus here to give me the win if we find removal? I think we do. Uh, did not find removal, but I guess I can tap down the Viper for one. And then they still have to trade here, otherwise they would be dead. I think that's worth a shot. Hope they don't have any interaction. Alright, so that happens. Opponent takes seven. We get to escape Strider. And then... Keep favor in the graveyard, since it can kill the snake. Resolves. Alright, so we're almost dead. Uh, do I scry by sacking the goat here? I mean, they seem pretty dead, regardless. And then untap Entrancing Liar, take action. Even found a removal spell. So I want to tap down a goal and kill the beetle instead of the other way around, otherwise I get a bunch of wolf tokens. And then I can even overpay in case I have a pump spell for the goal. And I just need two mana left over, basically. Although, maybe I should start with this, killing beetle. To play around a uh, counterspell. And then I can sink all my mana into the lyre. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So even if they have plus 3 on the goal, we still tap it down. And my opponent concedes. Wow, what a game. This was a pretty grindy matchup. A lot of close decisions. The attack with the boar was kind of where all hell broke loose and suddenly we were in this weird racing situation. Ton of decisions with escape. Strider also gave us a lot of options. Where to put the Mogus' favor, what to do with a liar. That was a complicated game. Don't think we played it perfectly, but uh, we got to win, so that's, I, th I guess, what matters in the end. Not sure about this hand. We're on the draw, which I guess helps, and I just need a single swamp for this to be functional. Any land lets me cast a couple scouts. So I guess on the draw I'll keep on the play, I would probably mulligan, since if we don't hit our third land drop, we're gonna be too far behind, but... Even just a forest here keeps us alive. And the wings here should also be serviceable. Would have been pretty useful in our previous matchup as well, since there was quite a ground stall. Alright, Utropia is a scary card. Typhon. Opponent's not messing around. 
That's a decent pickup. Don't think I'm gonna bluff this uh, attack. Doesn't seem worth it. And then next turn we have uh, a lot of options. It's only one mana to equip, so I could go Hierophant plus equip. Another good card here. Our scouts are not looking too impressive compared to my opponent's cards. Yeah, the 3 2 matches up quite well. And this also fills the graveyard for Strider. Bit light on black mana here, can only cast one of these. And we can't escape this one yet. Yeah, Hierophant is definitely a card that I probably undervalued. Just because escape is so good, especially in black. Definitely much better than simply a 3-3 death touch. I guess that works. Alright, that makes sense. So now trading the 3-3 three, three for the 3-2 three, feels less bad. Could just escape the Chimera. It's probably okay. It's a good blocker for the Typhon. And trading scouts could be fine, or I could race, but then they can also hit me with Utropia. I do kind of want to get these black cards in place since we're stuck on single black. So maybe that's a reason to try something different, but I don't have a very efficient turn. So probably still do this. And then I think I'm better off uh, staying back. Eh, trample could be good. Triggers Eutropia as well. So now we're taking five. Yeah, this game's not looking great. Nessian Boar. I guess that has decent stats here. And that plus the wings could also close out the game pretty quickly. So I guess I'm in. And then do I attack with the Chimera? I do put myself dead if they have an answer for the boar, so I'm probably better off playing it safe. Yeah, I guess boar plus Mogus' favor would have been lethal if we did hit them for five. But still, leaving ourselves dead to any interaction is kind of iffy. No, it's not a good one. Atris is pretty sweet. So their creatures do have tramples, so it's not like the chum blocker from the strider is super impressive. I am interested in killing them with a boar in two turns. So probably play Atris. Witness and a two pile. Think I want the two pile since I kind of went ahead my land drops. Could also attack with Chimera and then next turn kill them with Boar and Favor. Maybe that's better. That leaves more toughness on defense and a good blocker for their five power stuff. And then they might not expect uh, the kill out of nowhere. And 
then maybe move the wings instead of keeping up Omen. Alright, hopefully we can kill them next turn. But we might be forced to trade off the boar. No attacks. Opponent passes. I think we go for it. Uh, I could also play a liar. But it's only for x equals 3, so it's not like I can tap down anything significant. But they could have an instant speed enchantment here to maybe... I guess I can also use the wings' ability in that case, so it's fine. Alright, let's go for it. So I'll go full control just in case. Alright, vexing goal instead, so yeah, let's uh, sacrifice the wings. The boar's gonna reach for the sky. Sweet. And yeah, we got the achievement unlocked, so when pigs fly, let's keep it up. Decent looking hands. Omen to find blue or second black if we need it. Opponent deciding which to drop to lead with. It's gonna be Omen, sure. Probably get our blue mana over second black. Harpy's not too bad, there's definitely more valuable cards they could potentially exile. Plane carry edits, plus uh, Lyre would have also been reasonable there. But I'm not necessarily in a hurry to play Brawler. Alright. So, I guess... I could attack with Hierophant first, and they might just trade it for the Celebrant. So maybe we do just stay back with Hierophant. And then we can write plus carry edits. Repeal. Not super useful here. I guess that gives us a target. They don't have mana to activate the Soul Reaper, which is useful. So... I kinda wanna Brawler kill Harpy and then repeal the Soul Reaper. So, sure. And then do I attack with Hierophants? Basically just trades for celebrants. I guess it's okay. I guess I can finish off the brawler now instead. Alright, I'm still gonna go with the Hierophants. Sure.
The opponent killing Brawler last turn might have been better for us over Hierophant in case we found Omen of the Dead. But of course a 4-4 attacks a little bit better at the moment. Impending Doom. Yeah, I guess I'll trade. Like, I could just tap it down with a Lyre. But trading here seems like a pretty good deal still. Could have also put a stop on upkeep to scry with a witness, but I've got plenty of things to spend our mana on. Opponent has seen enough. And then I was probably gonna just attack with Arachnir and uh, Flyer, and then four mana to scry over getting in one damage. Seems worth it. Could have also, I guess, attacked with both and then sacrificed Omen for Scry 2 instead. Alright, on the play. No green mana, but we do get to Scry. Seems fine. Sure. Definitely a combo with her Piper. Guess I'm okay with if these uh, end up trading. Still get a goat out of the deal. Alright, so now we can repeal for one mana on the Evangel. I guess I'll repeal first. Next turn we can play our witness. So, so far so good. Short one green mana for the boar sadly, but that's fine. Could also go Chimera plus play the wings. Maybe that's better. Don't really need to fill the graveyard for anything. And then next turn I can equip the Chimera. Which is a two-turn clock with the witness. Finds uh, two colors in one turn. Well, we might be able to make some flying pigs again. Should I be concerned with a sweeper from my opponents? Shatter the sky would be pretty painful, I guess. So maybe 
I just play a land and pass. If they had a sweeper last turn, wouldn't they have played it already? Probably. So yeah, I don't think I play around it. Well, doesn't look like they have a Shatter the Sky. Eutropia. Alright, that'll do it. We're on the draw with uh, a somewhat greedy hand, but we do have both colors for Atris. We get to scry, we get an extra draw step. So we can probably find green mana. And once we do, this hand's pretty good. There we go. Happy to kill that with a favor. And then we have to decide which 3-drop to lead with. Right. This attacks into the Dryad a bit better, so probably play Chimera. Very happy to make that trade. And how about a nice two for one here with Atris? Keep the Hierophant to maybe trade off for a larger green creature that uh, we can't trade off as easily. Witness versus two unknowns. I mean, Witness is pretty good. Don't really need more lands. Take a Witness. Alright. I think I'm happy with uh, the card we took. They, of course, could have a Disenchant in hand, making Witness less effective. Alright, Huntmaster does get to attack. Indestructible. So take five. Ooh. Boar's kind of exciting. Could also go Strider plus Drag for two mana. But Boar has a naturally good block on the Berserker. So I think it's worth it. And if they kill the Boar, I'm still only taking five. And then maybe drag to the underworld next turn can make it so the boar survives while killing their creature. Alright, it's too bad. Having a strider in play first to sacrifice in response to an exile effect would have been nice, but uh still have plenty of action in hand. Yeah, escaping Chimera sounds pretty appealing too. Alright. That's a fair fight. Now we have 7 mana, so I can double spell a bit more effectively. So I can go Hierophant plus Keep of Drag. Auto Tapper trying to trick me. Of course I'm happy if the trade happens, but I'll keep Drag just in case. Omen can get back Hierophant as well. You have six cards in graveyards. 
This exiles four other cards and seven mana, so they need one more land. Strider can make a chum blocker, and then we'll still have drag up. And I can also flash an omen of turn if we don't need to drag. Seems better. Alright, so now we can start getting a bit more aggressive. So I could go Chimera plus Omen, or I can go Witness plus Omen. I guess Chimera applies a bit more pressure. And then getting back the Harrowfant means we've got another good blocker in case they escape Typhon. Um, not the best fight here. Might be a naturalized effect for the witness. Yep. At least we get a scry. Yeah, I mean, that seems kind of good. So they're just gonna escape their Typhon here, which we can block with a Hierophant, hopefully. Got some goats to chum block with as well. And then Omen getting back the flyer can start pressuring them. So I can go Harrowfan plus Green Omen. Wings would have been useful too. I guess the problem with getting back the Death Toucher now is that then we don't have a plan to actually kill them if they keep Typhon back. Could of course attack with Strider if they block, use Brawler to fight the Typhon. It's not a great trade considering they can get it back once again and I would lose both creatures. I guess just Omen back the Flyer and then Chum block with Goats. Can also kill it with favor. Another naturalize, all right. Uh, 
Well, we are in a bit of trouble now, potentially. Doesn't do much. I can play the Brawler. Kill and carry edits. But then I guess we can double block Typhon, but then they get it back once again. Don't have many relevant cards left. Already used both Black Omens. Still have the Lyre. Lyre would be a great answer here for the Typhon. I guess I should have attacked and then unsapped the Strider. Alright, Blessing. So had we attacked with the Strider, that would have been bad. Now we can at least trade. And they can't get it back this turn since they had to spend two mana on the trick. Step one, probably get back Strider. And then I can scry with the Omen to find Liar and start applying pressure. I guess I can also play Scouts. It's maybe better. I'm going to be one mana short of playing Liar and tapping this down if we top deck it. Probably means it's okay to sack an Omen here to Scry. Soul Reaper. Yeah, the problem with uh, drawing cards is that we deck faster, and that could definitely be a concern. So maybe I do bottom both. And then I could scry again. Alright, there's a liar. That's what we want. They've already used two naturalize effects, so hopefully they don't have another one. There's our answer to Typhon. We've scryed through our entire deck. Hit for eights. So that doesn't untap. Can always decide to untap Liar to tap down another creature and kill them. So untap Liar. I guess I might as well in case I have a flash creature somehow. Alright. Well, we basically drew our entire deck. But eventually, Liar was uh, good enough. Alright, 5-0. I guess we'll play it out. Reasonable hand. The Arachner won't be turned on right away. So just a 1-2 for now. Love to see the Strider. All 
Alright, Timurets. I guess we'll repeal. Since it's pretty effective against our graveyard synergies. And I think I'll play Scout before we Strider. Since it might attack a little bit better. Yeah, I guess getting in three damage is worth it for a turn. And then I can sacrifice a scout to Strider and Scry one. So I guess we need to do this on the opponent's end step. Or I can sack the goats. Get rid of the Arachnir, sadly. Yeah, sacking a goat to get in for three damage seems worth it. And then I could also sack the Caryatid, maybe. Although, that one I'm not sure about. Alright, so now I think I probably just sacrifice Scout. They might have a final death here, which would be pretty painful, exiling my Strider, since then we don't have anything going on. But I don't want to sack Karyadid, since we need it for double black. Yeah, that seems great. They did have final death indeed. Yeah, I mean, I could kill my own Strider, but I don't think that's quite worth it. Soul Reaper and two unknowns. Soul Reaper is not that exciting. I don't think these will be two lands, could be a land and like a, a worse card than Soul Reaper, but don't have many of those. Alright, two lands. pretty good here. So kill Harpy. And then just attack with Atris, I guess. This will be forced attack and then we can race. Don't necessarily want to escape this right now. I would get in one more damage with the carry added if I do escape. But we'll try this. Could have also put favor on the Atris itself. Have a lot of options. Perfect. Now, favor on the Flyer's Lethal. Don't think it's worth it to block. Alright, it's pretty good. So let's see, are they dead? If I favor on the flyer, they have to block with the shepherd. 
but then I can block Carriata, take 3 down to 1. If I favored Atris, what happens? They have to double block Atris to survive, and then they take 4 and they're dead. So favor on Atris should do it. Sweet. Alright, time for the final boss. Alright, nice uh, mana. Bit heavy on the threes, but uh, definitely still gonna keep. Gentleman's agreement not to play any cheap creatures. Yeah, probably lead with Chimera. More likely to have a good attack next turn. Could be bad against uh, Mogus's favor, I guess. Or an Omen. Alright. It's too bad. So, not gonna attack. Just uh, Strider or Scout is a question, probably Scouts. And then Brawler is a good way to get rid of the Pegasus. I guess we lose now. Yeah, I don't think there's a realistic way for us to beat Ashiok. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Suppose drawing the, the flying equipment was maybe a way out. Do need double green eventually, but got some good early plays. Strider definitely been one of our better cards. Unsurprisingly. Mogus could be naturalized unlike some of these other cards, but those line up a bit better. Also worse against uh, Elspeth's Nightmare. It's gonna be Omen instead. Opponent also on Sultai. Oh, hopefully no Ashiok. So if I play carry at it next turn we could Brawler. Or I could just play Chimera or Strider here. And next turn play Boar. The Death Toucher is kind of annoying with our Boar. Same with uh, the Brawler actually, so hopefully we can draw Mogus's favor at some point. Yeah, I'll play Chimera. There we go. So can get that back, kill Triton. Seems good. Opponent also milled over a pretty good one here. Also that are missing double blue.
All right, so we can see Uro here, which will be a problem. Don't have many answers to it. I guess for now Brawler kill Grove Dancer is okay. Or I could play the Nassim Boar, but it doesn't line up great against Uro. And they're gonna get back the Triton here, it looks like. Which also helps them get back Uro once again. This does get punished by a trick from the opponents. But I don't really want to toss in the Chimera as well. Since we can't really afford to lose that much value, I don't think. I guess that could have been worse. Should I attack with Chimera? I guess it's fine. Okay, if it trades for anything. Does make it easier for them to get Uro back, potentially. Uh, I think we gotta go digging. Find some action here, a liar would be insane. Seems good too. How about some flying pigs? Suppose I could have moved the equipment, but probably going to keep attacking with the boar. I guess they can also fight the boar now. Yep, so they're going to fight with the triton. I could sacrifice it, but I guess I'm okay killing the Triton. So no more flying pigs unless we find uh, Omen of the Dead. Mm, yeah, all these extra cards definitely add up. A good answer. So eight, nine, so just enough to tap it down. I guess we can even uh, equip thanks to carry added making double mana. So hold on, what do we want to give flying?
It's decent. I'll take my omen. Land and Arachner. So we're in decent shape now. Decline, and then I could scry with Omen. But I'm probably just gonna get one of these back. And that's a two turn clock. I guess they can potentially gain a bunch of life here with the Grove Dancer. Now we'll just send a boar. I think they're dead now. Sweet. Well, a pretty timely liar to shut down Uro. Omen to get back Boar once again, and yeah. Perfect way to conclude the sealed. One loss against Ashiok. Could have maybe played it out in case we found the wings, but didn't really feel like it. So yeah. Let's crack some packs. Pack one, pick one. Yeah, probably Taronika. I think it's close with Enox. I think they're both very good. And uh, this can potentially leave back some value, even if they do answer it. So I think it's actually close. But if you do get to curve out with Taronika and they don't have an answer right away, this definitely delivers a beatdown. Aphemia is also excellent. It's a close pick between Drag and Aphemia, I think. This is just such an efficient removal spell. But uh, Aphemia can definitely get out of hand as well if you've got a dedicated self-mill enchantment deck. So, close decision there. And an Underworld Breach. I think that was a the first runner we opened during the draft. Not great for limited, but uh, potentially fun for older formats. Pack one, pick one. Not a great pack. I guess Arrows' Blessing is pretty decent. Nice removal spell in red. This is not always going to be something you're interested in as a white deck, since you're typically more aggressive. Charger, kind of the reverse. Like, it's a good card in aggressive black deck, but some decks might be more defensive and don't necessarily want Charger. But still getting to escape this, like a 5-5, five five, usually gets to attack and uh, the opponent can't ignore it forever. Definitely a powerful card, but you do have to be slightly more aggressive to take full advantage. Alright, well, pretty successful day of uh, Theros Limited. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, 
have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.